Okay, here we are on Overtime. Ice Cube, are streaming services like Spotify unfair to artists? Um, if they don't pay them right. <laughs> yeah. They don't pay them, do they? Uh, you you know, don't get much from Spotify, do you? I get paid. You know, I don't know about that. Some <laughs> artists... Really? A lot. I mean, most artists complain about this. It's pennies, you know what I mean? It's, it's not Penny. a lot. Uh, but, you know, the the... The industry has been, you know, stealing from artists for a long time, so I don't even know if they know the difference, because, you know, the industry is just bad. You gotta fight for your money. So there's just a different way of doing it. Yep. Okay. Michael Eric Dyson, how would you begin to address prison reform in this country? Well, <clears throat> first of all, you'd have to take the uh, cash out of it, private industry, the way in which, unfortunately, right. you know, um, yeah. Attorney General's sessions has reignited uh, that firestorm that had been tamped down on by uh, Eric Holder. So first of all, take the big business out of it. Uh, and then secondly, have common sense reform that was forging a connection between Democrats and Republicans like what was going on under Obama uh, before the rise of Sessions and Trump. Uh, you know, Rand Paul is working uh, right alongside of a Democratic senator to try to make things work. That's number two. And then number three, I think if we provide people something basic like opportunities. It's been shown that most people who are in prison, not the hardened criminals, the nonviolent drug offenders, if they don't have the book thrown at them, they have the opportunity to make something of their lives. Look at the opioid response right now. Mostly uh, middle class or even working class white brothers and sisters who deserve to get a second shot, but when the crack economy was going hard in the late 80s, there was no such sympathy. If we could have that model prevail right now, I think that criminal justice reform would be hugely benefited. Okay. Uh, David Jolly, what or who is the biggest obstacle to getting your STOP Act passed? Well, you're not in Congress anymore. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the I'm biggest afraid. obstacle. No, 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 what's what, what's so stopping listen. it? He's not in Congress now. <laughs> no, okay. That'll definitely that's stop it. a bill from getting no, passed. No, but listen, this is important because you know what ticks me off about Donald Trump? I spent the last three to four years in Congress fighting to rebrand the Republican Party to accept climate change and marriage equality and gun control and campaign finance reform, right? Yeah. And, and this president set us back 20 years. Right. But the STOP Act is a very simple measure. It's four pages. It says, prohibit any member of Congress from directly asking you for money. We do it in states across the, the country. We apply it to our judicial candidates. The problem is, the biggest, the biggest impediment is big money drives re-elections. Right. And listen, the number of members of Congress who came up to me and said, good for you, I wish I could support you, but I can't because I got to go raise a million dollars to right. get reelected. That's the biggest hurdle. Okay. Uh, Simone, do you think anti Trump sentiment will carry Democrats in historically red districts like John Ossoff in Georgia's sixth? No, absolutely not. And if you look at no. um, that, if you look at that race, actually, they're running on health care and other issues down right. there. They're not necessarily running against Donald Trump. Uh, Donald Trump won that district by one percentage point. So it's, it's notoriously close. So I think Democrats will need to talk less about how bad Republicans are and more about what they're going to do and what their plans are and how they differ in policies to win in 2018. Because they talked about, I mean, Donald Trump got elected at a historically low approval rating. People already didn't like him, but they voted for him for president anyway, and a lot of Republicans around the country. So if folks want to win, they got to do more than just say, oh, these people are really bad, vote for me. They have to tell them why. Mm -hmm. Okay. David Gregory, do news journalists have a duty to protect sources that leak sensitive information from the government? Yes. I think they should protect sources. I think... You know, I think leakers like uh, Jim Comey, but, but people who leak in the government are often doing so to try to influence an, an outcome, to, uh, to reveal something that, is, uh, um, that gets to wrongdoing in the government. And I think it's part of a free press that we get as much information as we can. The government is built and designed in a way to only tell the American people what they want them to know. And you have to have investigative journalists digging. And a lot of times that means you've got to talk to people anonymously. You've got to protect the people you talk to to find out what's really going on. Yeah, I mean, reality winner, hero. I can, I, may, can I ask a rap question? Would that be out of line? No, please. It's <laughs> Ice Cube. So, I mean, I don't get to hang yeah, out with I'll Ice Cube. Answer. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Okay. You know I can talk to you at home. I don't get to hang out with Ice Cube all the time. <laughs> How do you compare the rap of your day, the flow, the lyrics, compared to some of the stuff today? You know, you hear Future, Migos. Yeah. Um, you know, some of these guys, how, 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 do you, how do you compare it? I mean, it strikes me that a, a lyrics in your day, which was my day, um, 
were a lot more in your face, a lot more um, direct. Now it's a lot more about flow and beat and stuff like that. I just wonder yeah. what you think of it. Well, I think, uh, you know, rap uh, had a political edge to it. You know, it was, you know, talking about, you know, uh, uh, you know, doing great things in the community, pushing the program. And then at a certain, po at a certain point, I think mainstream media really decided, yo, you know, let's not promote Public Enemy and KRS-One and Ice-T and Ice Cube because what they're saying is, a, you know, real incendiary, you know what I'm saying? So let's deal with, you know, escapism rap. Let's deal with partying and clubs and cars and jewelry and money. And, and that became the norm and that, you know, if, if the kids see that, they're gonna wanna emulate that. So that's became, right. you know, what we've been kind of feeding off of for the last 20 years. But, you know, with, with Kendrick Lamar, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, even, even, you know, uh, Kanye was one of the first. You know, Jesus Walks was so, you know, outside the box, and it was bringing it back to, you know, saying something in, in the rhymes, and it wasn't just escapism. Dr. Dot, we were listening to Playboy Carti in the green room, so that's what uh, we were doing. No lies. On David Fox. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's got mad uh, skills. <laughs> Michael Eric Dyson, is Jeff Sessions threatening to restart the war on drugs? Yeah, he's already restarted it. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Uh, thinking about pot. How will this affect the after party? Is <laughs> <laughs> it depends on what kind of access you have, Bill. Uh, <laughs> but, you know... I got some for you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you could do all this on television. <laughs> all right. Yeah, when California. it rains the poor, they got money for wars, but can't feed the poor. I mean, yeah, the war on... The war on, um, the war on drugs has been restarted from Nixon, Reagan, and now down to uh, Sessions and Trump. And it's, uh, it didn't work the first time around. It put a whole bunch of people in jail who don't deserve to be there. And this time around, I don't think they're gonna be able to keep uh, from putting in a lot of people who voted for Donald Trump as well. Right. I mean, one of the, the <laughs> thing, the point you were brilliantly making is, uh, Bill, is that the very people who voted for Donald Trump are the ones who are being deserved by him in, in such lethal way. Yeah. All right, thank you for my wonderful panel. Terrific audience, I appreciate everything.